Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to uh, give you some tips on rendering like a, this is like a busy kind of a, a city scene, you know, where people are crossing uh, the street and they're like buildings and stuff in the background. Um, I did this freehand. Um, if you were being really technical, of course, this would be like a one point perspective drawing. Um, but I did it freehand in pencil. So um, nonetheless, um, I think it's cool to do it pretty loose and not too tight meaning getting everything accurate and so on because then it, you enjoy it more and um, you know you just really just go with the flow um, however um, when I was sketching it some things I did keep in mind or the aspects of perspective which is still pretty useful so for example I think uh, the first thing I did when I looked at this scene was I sensed I try to sense where the um, horizon line is so of course I would try to you know get a sense or even do a little th thumbnail of where that horizon line is okay because that's where you know the horizon line is the line on which the imaginary line on which um, the vanishing point lies so that means every all the the lines that are parallel or hmm, see if I can find a, a layman's term or way of describing it all the lines that are diagonal go ultimately towards the vanishing point so for example these lines the buildings they all go to the vanishing point so i may not necessarily know specifically where it is but i'd make a guess because that's pretty much you know enough and i would draw the horizon line get a sense of where the uh you know uh vanishing point is in other words where all these lines lead to these diagonal lines lead to because there are two sets of lines there are the, the vertical lines that are pretty much straight and then there are the diagonal lines, and all of them lead to the vanishing point. So it's almost like it's like this, you know. And then all the buildings lead to that point. So I'll, I'll, that's the main thing. I would try to isolate where that horizon line is, and then I'll just put in the buildings after I do that. You know, I try to take care of the bigger things first. Then I get a sense of where this little pedestrian crossing is right here. Then I'd start sketching in the people. And I wouldn't just sketch them part by part. I'd put them in as whole forms first, like that. You know? And then the cars, I'll just put them in as boxes. So, you know, it's good to develop a drawing like this, to me, for me, in, in stages and not necessarily just go straight to the detail. Because when you do it in stages or think about the bigger things first, it makes it easier to um, to map things out and see how everything is connected to everything else. All right, then you know you can go in and um, start um, mapping things out. All right, um, and you can even create things as you go along, which I have done in this drawing. So um, I guess where could I start? I could I guess I'll start with the things in front. So like the little figures. Um, I'm gonna start going in and just uh, outlining everything, and then I'll go in and render them in afterwards. Oh, and another thing is before I go in, now with a scene like this, obviously I can't, um, you know, do a detailed rendering of everything. So you'll notice as some of the, um, the, the forms that I'll outline, I'll kind of like leave the lines loose. Okay, so for things that are fur like further away from us, we can't see all the details. So you shouldn't try to, you know, draw all the details. It's good to leave the lines a little bit open and loose and the eyes will kind of like fill in the rest of the information, all right? So with some of them, I'll just lightly leave the forms open and you'll see that as I start going in.
All right, so I'm just sketching in the people just walking across the street. Um, I guess, you know what, just to do it a stage at a time, I'm going to render them in, and then I'll go in and do the buildings. So, essentially, um, some of the things that I'll do is I'll start distinguishing, like, the local values. So, for example, um, I'll have, you know, like, for example, her pants are darker than her, her, um, her top. So, yeah, I'll just use a layer of hatch lines just to distinguish that. See, and I'm using lines that are consistent and going along the length. You know, so they can be seen as indicating value and not like light and shade necessarily. It's like local value and not light and shade. All right? So I can make his his shirt be um, darker. See, and this is not giving any indication of of light and shadow, like where light is coming from. I'm just darkening the, the clothing, all right? All right, so now I can go in and then start indicating light and shadow and so on. <clears throat> That's pretty much it uh, as far as the people. Now we can um, go in and, and start doing the buildings. And uh, as far as the buildings, I'm pretty much just using the, um, you know, just straight hatch lines. That's all I'll be using. But I'll be, you'll see, notice that as I go towards closer to the vanishing point or away um, from the, um, the foreground, the lines will get looser and also lighter. Uh, it will get you know heavier as it as it gets closer to us, as it is with things that we we look at, right?
So the key thing is certain details you have to kind of map out because it they're like landmarks. You know, they, they kind of help to um, give a give some order to everything. So it just doesn't eventually become one big old mess. All right. So especially where like, you know, separations between major buildings like right here. You have to make sure those lines are bold. So, you know, it does give some order to everything that's going on. Because otherwise, this drawing can easily become an incomprehensible mess. You know, you can't really tell what's what, what's going on, or, you know, and that's not what you want. You still want it to be, um, you know, you still want it to maintain some level of clarity. So if you notice, the lines I use in these areas are a little bit lighter as it goes um, further away from us. You know, in terms of depth of space, and here, see, there's like a little crossing here with some people. So, you know, I'm just basically just shaping out some basic forms, but you can't really make out anything. But you have a sense of, you know, little activity that's going on. So I'm just using little blocks of lines here, just to indicate that there's some people, and using little round shapes that are like just heads. See, and that, you know, we'll interpret it as people walking or just a gather a group of people or a crowd of people
Yeah, so um, see, what I did was I distinguished the buildings by, you know, pretty much just thinking of them as, um, you know, large blocks like this. So, you know, I'm assuming the light is coming from the right, or I made the light come from the right, so this side is in shadow. Alright. And this side is in, um, in light, because this is facing away, and this is facing towards the light. So this is, you know, that gives them a sense of volume and they stand out. And I also, just for variety, you know, treat each side a little bit differently. Like even with this one, I just kind of like decided to give it, you know, like these window type forms. Um, so they're all, you know, they have a little variety and it makes the drawing a little bit, bit more uh, interesting. So they don't seem monotonous or, you know, like the buildings are all just identical. And uh, notice that as I go higher and away, the, the details get a little loose. So I don't try to get, like, for example, an exact rectangular shape for the window. I may just do something like that. You know, and that's it. Because that's how things are, you know, with the further away they are from us, they seem a little bit less uh, clear and detailed. And um, our eyes just fill in the information and just, you know, complete it for us. And that's essentially how I would, you know, deal with the other side. In the same way, you just create this, um, outline the, um, the buildings like this. And then I would start rendering in. So in other words, I shade it by layers. I first, you know, block in the large forms. Then I start distinguishing the um, the shadow the shadow sides from the sides that are in light. All right. And then. Um, See, then you put in little, you know, little oddities, little things that are a little different. Actually, I'll put a car right here. See, that's like the license plate. And I, I'm just scribbling here because, you know, you wouldn't really be able to make that out anyway. So I just, you know, just made that up. And uh, it, it works. Because as I said, you know, with detail, with um, details get um, less distinct the further things are away from us. And uh, I would just do the same for these buildings, all right? And of course, I try to treat these a little bit differently as well, so they have a little bit, um, you know, as much character. You know, just give them something interesting. So they also stand out, also from the ones on that side. So this one may have a huge board or something, you know, and the building is not as regular as that side. It's so maybe something like this, which may be like a, a huge sign. sidewalk here see and I'd make sure that these lines are consistent with the um, the vanishing point because as I said you know everything all the lines all the diagonal lines have to lead to the vanishing point or else your drawing is going to be pretty consistent inconsistent it, ju it will just feel wrong you know so I could you know make this little Just to give it some some variety, I could treat this differently. Yeah, and that's pretty much how I would proceed with dealing with this. Until all the details are, you know, filled in. Now I'd make sure that the lines that are distinguishing the buildings are pretty bold. Like here. See, it gives, it gives everything a sense of structure. Alright, and that's, that's pretty much it.